Hello everyone, it's Jay back again with another solo history lesson this week. And again, I'm recording this at home. So if you start hearing footsteps stomping around in the back or small children screaming, I do apologize and hopefully they'll be able to stay quiet for a little bit so I can record this. I am recording this on Tuesday, April 14th, 2020. And um, I, I had another episode prepared for this week. I had actually mostly recorded it and was getting ready to edit it yesterday when something else happened. And I decided to scrap that episode and bring you this one instead. So for those of you who don't know, um, on Monday, April 13th, at about 1.30 p.m., a fire broke out in the Crooked Spoon Cafe, which is located in downtown Grand Marais. Um, it's actually, the address is 17 West Wisconsin Street. So if you are driving in, you're gonna come from the top of the hill from the Duluth side, turn into the downtown area, that's Wisconsin Street. You're gonna drive past Joins Ben Franklin on the left, and then you're gonna go through that intersection. And Cricket Spoon Cafe is in the middle of a cluster of buildings on the left-hand side. It's next to the parking lot for Joins Ben Franklin. So if you've been to Grand Marais, you'll be probably very familiar with this area. So the fire started at about 1.30 p.m. and it was extremely windy yesterday and those high winds really fed that fire and it quickly spread to the two neighboring businesses which are Picnic and Pine, which is the gift shop located on the corner there. Of course, taking into account that parking lot that's also there. And then the uh, business on the other side, which is White Pine North. Four hours later or so, the fire was contained, but all three businesses were a complete loss. In fact, they brought in an excavator towards the end to tear down the buildings to try to quell the fire. So there, there's just nothing left. There's a pile of rubble and there's bricks and boards. And I mean, there, it's, I went down there just now and there's actually um, like t-shirts from one of the stores. I don't know if it's from Picton and Pine or if it's from White Pine North, but uh, t-shirts had somehow survived the fire and were kind of sitting on top of the rubble. I mean, obviously they're probably burned and, um, or smell very strongly of smoke, but there just, there wasn't anything left of any of these stores. So for today's episode of Exploring the North Shores Solo History Lessons, I wanted to take a look at the history of the three buildings. Let's get started. This podcast episode is sponsored by Cascade Vacation Rentals. They know that life has a tendency to be overwhelming at times, and busy schedules often leave people feeling overwhelmed and disconnected. That's why they're here, to offer you the space and opportunity to reconnect to what's important. Cascade Vacation Rentals has one of the largest selections of privately owned vacation rental homes and cabins on Minnesota's North Shore of Lake Superior, from Duluth to the Canadian border. Their team is there to help you and your family or small group enjoy a vacation you'll remember for years to come. Visit them online at www.cascadevacationrentals.com. And don't forget to use promo code PODCAST for the largest percent off discount available at any given time. Again, that's www.cascadevacationrentals.com. So I'm gonna start with the first building in the section that was destroyed by the fire um, yesterday. Of course, by the time you hear this, will have been two days ago. But that would be the Picnic and Pine gift shop, which was located at 19 West Wisconsin Street. So for those of you who haven't visited Grammar in a few years, you'll probably remember this as a store called The Attic. The Attic was sold by Tom and Barbara Rochester to Beth and Tim Kennedy on May 2nd of 2016. Now Beth and Tim then gave the business over to their daughter Kelsey to manage and Picnic and Pine was the brainchild of Kelsey Kennedy. So it's a gift shop that's kind of very Northwoods whimsy. It had a lot of candles and gifts, apparel. There's kids stuff like all these puppets and other really fun things. It was just a really fun Northwoods North Shore store. So Kelsey gave the building a facelift and created this bright and colorful exterior and filled the outside flower planter with just beautiful flowers. And the new Picnic and Pine was this bright, cheerful, and extremely welcoming place. It was really a great addition to downtown Grand Marais. 
but prior to being Picnic and Pine, the building has been known as The Attic since it was purchased by Bruce and Sue Kerfoot in 1985. But going even further back than that, the building's history started in the 1920s when it was first known as Andy's Pool Hall and owned by a na man named Andy Anderson. Andy sold the pool hall in 1935 to George Bison, who went on to change the name to Bison's Pool Hall. So the building was part pool hall, part restaurant, and pretty popular place. And it was sold again at some point in the 1940s and became known as the Northern Lights Bar and Lounge. So at some point, the bar also then became the American Legion post and would remain that until the American Legion moved to their larger building just up the block on First Avenue West back in 1985. And that's when the Kerfoots relocated their gift shop, which had previously been known as Artisan's Attic, and they shortened the name to the attic and then moved it into that store. The Kerfoots owned the building and the store for only a year before selling it to their longtime employee, Bette McDonald. So Bette would own the building and manage the attic until 2005, presumably when she neared retirement age, and she then sold it to Tom and Barbara. So that brings us back to the 2016 purchase of the buildings by the Kennedys, who then owned the building and the store until the fire destroyed it on Monday. I'm going to get into a little bit more about this store in the end, but that's basically the history. So it started off as a pool hall, it kind of stayed a pool hall and then bar and restaurant until it became the gift shop in the 1980s. And then it stayed a gift shop. And yeah, that's pretty much been it for that building. The next of the buildings in the row that was destroyed is the Crooked Spoon Cafe. So unlike the attic, the Crooked Spoon Cafe hasn't been too many things since the building was built in 1924. Previous to being the Crooked Spoon Cafe, it was known as Jackson's Cafe, and previous to that, a small building on the lot was known as Jackson's Confectionery. Now, just because it hasn't been a lot of other things doesn't mean this building doesn't have a lot of history. So Jackson's Confectionery was opened in 1915 by Fred Jackson Sr. And from any records I could find, the front part of the lot was completely empty until it was purchased by Fred Jackson's daughter, Helen, in 1923. So, you know, Helen's father owned and operated Jackson's Confectionery in the lot prior to this. But once Helen opened up her store or her cafe, rather, and called it Jackson's Cafe in 1924, he closed the confectionery. So Helen, it seems, was actually quite a uh, entrepreneur herself. She was um, attempting to really capitalize as much as she could from the business and the lot. In 1926, just two years after opening the cafe, it also became the local Greyhound bus station. Helen also attempted to open a 20-seat theater in the back half of the lot, but that endeavor never came to fruition, and instead, Helen expanded the restaurant into that space in later years. So it seemed that Helen owned the building and Jackson's Cafe until 1939 when it was purchased by her brother Fred Jackson Jr. and his wife Esther. In the 1970s, Jackson's Cafe also became the local DMV hub for purchasing motor vehicle licenses in Cook County. Now Fred Jr. passed away sometime in the 80s and Esther took over primary ownership. She managed the business until 2003 when she had to close Jackson's Cafe due to her failing health. The building sat empty for a couple of years before being purchased by Jim and Jackie Larson and Glenn and Renee Larson. They remodeled the building and then leased the newly renovated restaurant to Sarah and Nathan Hingus. So they opened the Crooked Spoon Cafe in 2006. So Nathan and Sarah operated the Crooked Spoon and eventually bought the building from the Larsons in 2011. Recent North Shore visitors will recall that in 2015, they actually added on to the building by building the second story addition that's kind of in the back of it. So you kind of go in the alleyway between the two buildings and then you go up the staircase and you're in this kind of crow's nest overlook type thing. So it held the waiting room for the restaurant. So diners would come in and if there was a wait, they could then go up there and they can purchase drinks and appetizers and enjoy the views of the Grand Marie Harbor while waiting for their table. So next in the row is White Pine North, which is located at 15 West Wisconsin Street. So the history of this building is actually, it, it's probably the most 
interesting of the histories, I guess, and it dates back to the early 1920s when the lot was purchased by Ruth Soderberg, who had a small store built on the lot to house her women's clothing store that was known as Soderberg's Dry Good and Clothing in 1923. In 1933, 10 years later, Ruth purchased the building that is now Joins Ben Franklin and moved her business out of the 15 West Wisconsin location and opened up an ice cream store. So she then leased the building to two brothers named Milford and Ed Humphrey, who opened up a business. Actually, they kind of split the building in half and opened up two businesses. Ed opened up the Great Northern Cleaning and Laundry Service on one side, and then uh, Milford opened up the Grammaray Photo Service on the other side. In 1935, Ed Humphrey transitioned his side of the store into a men's clothing store, known as the Great Northern Men's Shop. Now, in 1936, the two brothers were able to pool together enough money to purchase the building from Ruth. And after purchasing the building, both brothers renamed their businesses, with Ed calling his side of the store the Humphrey Clothing Store, and Milford renamed his the Photo Art Shop. Sometime in the mid-1940s, Ed ended up moving to Duluth to work in the shipyards to help support the war effort, which left Milford managing the entire store. Then in 1944, Milford was actually drafted into the U.S. Army to fight during World War II and started clearing out the store in preparation to leave. However, before that could happen, the draft age was suddenly changed and Milford's service was no longer required. He was able to revive the business and keep it open through the war. When World War II ended, Ed returned to Grand Marais, and post-war both businesses thrived to the point where they expanded into other buildings. Humphrey's clothing store actually moved across the street into a building that is now where Sievertson's gallery is. So this meant that Milford's photo art shop was the sole business left in the building on Wisconsin Street, on that side of Wisconsin Street anyway. Milford then expanded his store to include a gift and flower shop. So then by 1964, the two businesses operated separately and successfully. So Milford and Ed dissolved their joint business venture and Milford took over sole ownership of the store and building. Milford would run his business successfully into the 1970s when he was nearing retirement age. He had hoped that his son Steve would take over ownership of the building and management of the store, but tragically, Steve died in a motorcycle accident in 1973. This left Milford nearing retirement age with no one to pass the store on to, so he started seeking out new owners. In 1974, the photo art shop was purchased by Jim and Jackie Larson who then changed the name of the business to White Pine North. So if you recall, Jim and Jackie Larson were also the owners of Jackson's Cafe slash Cook and Spoon Cafe. And so they had purchased White Pine North prior to purchasing that building. So just to kind of give the timeline here a little bit. So Jim and Jackie Larson changed the name of the business to White Pine North. They managed White Pine North until January of 2020 when they sold the business to Tyler and Jessica Dean. The Larsons, however, did maintain ownership of the building. So things seem to be going pretty good for Tyler and Jessica in their first couple months of operation. But as we all know, recent history has not been kind to most businesses and the COVID-19 pandemic forced the closure of the store in March of 2020. And then, of course, on April 13th, just... You know, yesterday as I'm recording this, or a couple days ago as you might be listening to it, the store burned to the ground. So that is basically and very briefly the history of these three buildings. Exploring the North Shore is sponsored by The Big Lake. The Big Lake is an approachable art gallery and gift shop located in the beautiful harbor town of Grand Marais, Minnesota, as well as online at thebiglakelife.com. The Big Lake provides a beautifully curated and fun shopping experience to complement your North Shore adventures with artists and products that reflect the culture, values, allure, and lifestyle of the North Shore. Shop online at www.thebiglakelife.com and use promo code EXPLORE for 15% off your first online order. We all kind of know that history isn't just the people who owned them and the businesses that were within them. It's the memories people have, um, the kind of the heart and soul people pour into it. It's it's really not easy, even in a town like Grand Beret, to run a restaurant. And it's not easy to run a gift shop, especially in a town that has 
several other gift shops and kind of make it stand out. I actually remember when the attic was for sale and when Kelsey purchased it, I briefly had a conversation with her about a management position for the store that she was opening up and kind of thought it'd be fun to help manage a cute little store in downtown Grammaray. I ended up not doing that and instead stayed with Cascade and well, we all know where that went. Here I am now. Um, but you know, it was just such a cute store. I loved going in there. I love the people that work there. It was just a really, really nice store. Kelsey really had done so many great things with it. And earlier today, I actually drove down just to kind of see what was left of the store. So on Monday, we were actually driving back from going out to get some photos and videos and things that I'm just doing for social media. And saw on Facebook a post about the fire, but I couldn't tell. It did, they didn't say where it was or whatever. So we drove back into town and could see the smoke from quite a ways away, actually, because the wind was really, really blowing and the smoke was super heavy. This was at like 1 2 o'clock. So pretty soon after the fire had started and it just spread really, really fast. And we pulled into the Java Moose parking lot and I hopped out of my car and I ran across the street and just looked at what I could see, which wasn't much, and I didn't really want to get any closer, but I mean, the roof, what I saw was the roof of Picnic and Pine on fire. And then somebody who had been closer to the fire came back um, down the way I was and was able to tell me that the fire was in um, Crooked Spoon mostly, and then had spread to the roof of Picnic and Pine. I left a few minutes after that, but as you drive on Highway 61, past downtown, you could look down the alleyways and there were cars on fire. There was a van on fire. Um, you could see the shell and like the outline of Crooked Spoon, like that much of it had burned so fast that you could see like anything wooden had burned away and all that was really left was like the steel frame, uh, which was kind of and that was that to me was the most jarring part was just how you're like, OK, it's gone. And then throughout the day, you could tell Picnic and Pine was gone. You could tell a Crooked Spoon was gone. But for a little bit, it seemed like White Pine North might have been OK. Just the wind was blowing in the direction towards Picnic and Pine and the harbor. So there was a kind of a thought briefly at first that maybe Picnic and Pine would be OK. I mean, I'm sorry, that White Pine North would be OK. But by the afternoon, they had to actually level all of the buildings. The fire had spread through the walls into the store. And by leveling all three buildings, they were able to stop the fire from then spreading onto the buildings next door to it, which is Sven and Oli's Pizza. So Sven and Oli's Pizza, from what I could see going down there today, looks perfectly fine, which is kind of shocking considering how intense that fire was and how long it burned for and how high those winds were that there was no damage or at least no visible damage that I could see to Sven and Oli's pizza. So it's really a huge testament to our volunteer fire departments. I believe that the Graham Ray Fire Department was there, the Maple Hill Fire Department was there, I think the Lutzen Fire Department was there. Um, I, there was four fire departments, I'm, I'm apologizing that I don't know which ones they all were, but these are all local small fire volunteer firefighters like they they don't get paid these are people that stood there for four or five hours and just battled this fire and and just because that's what they do you know it's it's really um I just yeah it, it, was, it was really watching them and we left as we heard the next I think the Grammar Fire Department was there when I was down there and I left as soon as I heard the rest of them coming because I figured they you know I didn't know I didn't want to be in the way, basically, even though I was pretty far away. I was like a block away, but um, I left when the second one started rolling in and they just fought it throughout the day and they kept going and they kept going and they were pumping water from Lake Superior and just doing everything they could. I and mean, I think they knew pretty early on they couldn't save Crooked Spoon and they couldn't save Pitting Up Pine and they couldn't save White Pine North, but maybe they could save, you know, the screen print shop is behind there. And then of course, Sven and Oli's Pizza next door. And they did, they, they were able to save those. A small amount of the debris actually flew off into the kind of the front of the Cobblestone Cove Villas. So if you're familiar with like the layout of Grammaray, basically 
a piece of flaming debris had to fly over Sievertson Gallery, go down the alleyway, and then landed in front of Cobblestone Coa Villas, where uh, some people were nearby and actually saw it started, and they were able to put that fire out before anything more came of it. So there's some burnt vegetation in the front there. Otherwise, everything there was fine. But, I don't know, it's just, it was a crazy day. The winds were very high. It was just, I don't know, it was, as somebody who has now lived in Grand Marais for many years, but has been coming up to Grand Marais to visit since I was a kid, it was an extremely upsetting day. It was a hard day. It was a hard day for many people. And I did go back today just to see what was left of it, maybe grab a couple of pictures for, you know, I was, like I said, I was sharing things as it happened pretty much live yesterday on Facebook. So grabbed a couple of pictures and I ran into Kelsey Kennedy, who is the manager of uh, Picnic and Pine in front. And we chatted for a little bit about, you know, what does it mean? And at this time she has really, she does not know what's going to happen. White Pine North has said that they plan to rebuild. I haven't heard anything from the Crooked Spoon Cafe. And then Kelsey's just like, you know, she was actually waiting for the insurance person to come up and um, look at things and just, you know, kind of in that early, early, early stages of trying to figure out what happens from here. So at this time, it's really unknown. Um, the entire lot is just a pile of debris. Like I said, there was a couple of t-shirts that had managed to somehow survive that were sitting on top of the pile. And I saw a binder and I don't know what the binder was for, if it was for um, white pine or if it was for a crooked spoon, but it was like half burnt, half still there. But everything else was just completely destroyed. Like it was very hard to tell what were remnants of which store and which where each store ended and the next one began. You know, Kelsey said she was able to kind of step back and look at where she would stand to take pictures of her building and realized, oh, okay, so this is this is where mine begins and where it ends. But you couldn't, like, just me standing there, and even though I'm pretty familiar with downtown, I couldn't tell. Like, there was just nothing to distinguish the three from each other. So a really devastating day for Grand Marais. Um, I do have memories, too, of going into White Pine North when I was a kid. I remember my mom would always take us up shopping in Grand Marais, and there'd be one store we would always go into. And then I didn't actually have the opportunity to go to the Crooked Spoon Cafe until this past summer, where I just so happened to go three times pretty much in the same month. So I had a friend come up from Minneapolis, Matt Oleg, who was doing an art project up here, and we brought him there for dinner. We brought uh, my in-laws came for a visit, and we brought them there. And then my husband and I actually went for his birthday for a dinner there. And that's when we had the opportunity to go on the second story and kind of sit in the waiting room type area, which is probably the best waiting room experience I've ever experienced at a restaurant because you're not just sitting awkwardly in like a lobby. It was pretty, you know, it was like a little mini restaurant up there. I had a bunch of tables and you could order from the bar some drinks and some appetizers and kind of had large windows that overlooked the harbor. So a really nice place, you know, all of the owners have really put a lot of effort into them, of course. White Pine North has brand new owners, so this is devastating for everybody all around. There are funds set up through the Grand Marais State Bank if you are looking to donate. Um, there's also a GoFundMe currently as I'm recording this for um, the Crooked Spoon Cafe. I did ask Kelsey if there was going to be a GoFundMe set up for Picnic and Pine, and she said that she didn't feel at the time that she was wanting to do that, but we'll see if somebody else sets it up for her or if something changes. But yeah, so if you know you feel inclined, you can go um, pretty much onto face anybody in Grammarie's Facebook page, but um, get the information for donating through the Grammarie State Bank or just Google Grammarie State Bank and you can mail in a check and you can just put you know, fire relief fund and they'll disperse it evenly amongst the three. Or if you want to donate specifically to one business, you can, you know, it's like the Crooked Spoon Cafe fire and uh, Picnic and Pine fire and White Pine North fire and they'll, they'll disperse it where it needs to go. And that has been set up by the city of Grand Marais. So you'll know that your money is going directly to the people who have been affected by this fire. 
Oh, so not a happy, I mean, it's, it's hard to really say right now. Buildings have burned here before. I mean, it's not the first time that we've lost a building to fire. In fact, you know, just down the street where the Security State Bank is right now used to be the old grocery store that burnt down. So, you know, even this part of Grand Marais has not been immune to fire. And many parts of Cook County have actually uh, had fire. So this isn't the first fire. It won't be the last fire, but it's the first one in recent years. And it was a big enough fire that destroyed completely three entire businesses, which basically made up half of that street between First Avenue West and Broadway along Wisconsin Street. Those three businesses and then the Joints parking lot is half of the block. And the only reason Sven and Oli's was really saved was because there is a larger alleyway separating White Pine North and Sven and Oli's. So, well, that and the, of course, efforts of the fire department who pretty much spent half the day uh, spraying down Svenoli's roof and just trying to contain the fire as best they could. Um, so I'm going to end the episode here. And if you want to look at pictures before, after, I mean, there's plenty on Facebook. If you just Google Grammar A Fire, there's dozens of articles that have been written. WTIP.org and Boreal, B-O-R-E-A-L.org are our two news source news sources. So WTIP is our radio station and Boreal is kind of our media station. And they both have been covering it along with pictures from the day and anything else if you're curious to see what it looks like now. And I'm sure soon enough the cleanup will happen and those will be empty lots probably through the summer and who knows from there. And we can only wait and see. And until then, this has been Jay with another solo history lesson on exploring the North Shore. Everybody have a good day.